it's a Monday. Thanks for joining us today for another Prophecy in the News daily update, the 20th of February. It's amazing how fast things are moving today, and Avi Lipkin is with us again today. Avi, the world is spinning almost out of control, except we know who's in control. Good to have you here with us again. Amen. Thank you. Great to be here. Avi has brought a new book, and uh, those of you who, who have joined us on uh, the uh, preceding uh, daily updates know a little bit about this book. It's called Return to Mecca, and the thesis of the book is centered around the fact that when the Jews uh, originally fled from Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, they crossed into Midian, where Mount Horeb is, and then uh, in their 40 years of wander wandering through the wilderness, they wandered into the territory of Mecca and Medina before they came up to the Holy Land. And so that sets the stage for the thesis of this book. Very correct. Indeed, uh, what we see here is that the children of Israel, uh, after the great miracles that God performed in Egypt, the ten plagues, and then the drowning of the Egyptian charioteers in the Red Sea, um, after the, the Ten Commandments, you know, the Cecil B. the Mill movie with oh. Charlton Heston, and, you know, miracle after miracle after miracle, and the Israelites, you know, are misbehaving. And then we're, we're pretty much around where uh, Mount Sinai is, northwest Saudi Arabia. You can see the Red Sea, and you can see basically the Gulf of Aqaba right there, Gulf of Elat. And uh, Moses sends out the 12 spies and from there. And they go up, it's 40 days. You go up, they come back. By the way, what's the story with Elijah the prophet? 40 days to go down to Mount Horeb. Oh, yeah. So we know that this is what we're talking about, 40 days. And, uh, of course, 10 of the 12 spies speak badly about the land. And, of course, Kalev, ben Yifuneh, and Joshua speak good of the land. And God gets so angry that he says, you know what? You guys are not worthy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn you south. And you're going to march along the Red Sea south. And you're going to be in the desert, the horrible desert, for 38 years or 40 years. You're not going to see the Holy Land. So the children of Israel are wandering all over the Arabian Peninsula, which includes what is today Mecca and Medina. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, again, it, I mean, I'm very fortunate that my wife Rachel speaks Arabic. We watch the Arabic TV together, and we constantly watch programs coming out of Mecca and Medina where the imams are saying that Moses and Aaron and uh, Jethro were here. And yet today Jethro is buried in Tiberias. He had to flee with the children of Israel. Uh, Moses, uh, nobody knows where he's buried. Uh, you know, also, I think uh, Aaron, nobody really knows where they're buried. But we know where Jethro is buried, even though he was the high priest of Medina, Midian. By the way, Medina is Midian, mm -hmm. Madian. Yes. All these were variations of the same word. One of the names of Medina is Yathrib, which is Jethro in Arabic. Another name for Medina is <coughs> Medina Minawara, which means Medina the Menorah. And uh, the phylacteries that the Jewish men wear, I believe, are replicas of the Kaaba and Mecca because yeah. Moses was the understudy to Jethro for 40 years. Now, uh, you know, Cecil B. DeMille, we mentioned him a minute ago, the Ten Commandments, big movie. He may have had it right because he had the Israelites crossing this huge sea. Right. And the water's parting. Right. Well, the only such sea in the vicinity would have to be the Gulf of Aqaba uh, today. Uh, and uh, it, it leads directly to Midian. Right. So uh, by accident, Cecil B. DeMille got it right. Now, having sort of laid claim, if you will, by having traveled through uh, uh, the land of Midian and then the area of Mecca and Medina, uh, they kind of sanctified that land before traveling on to Israel. But now it's thousands of years later, and there's a big battle to see who's going to own all this territory. Correct. And you're saying that the leaders of Islam actually remember, they recall the wilderness march, and they say uh, the, the, the feet of the Jews actually trod upon our land. Right. And they might actually someday rise to reclaim it. Right, and indeed there are thousands and thousands of stones and imprints in Arabia of the footprints of the menorahs, of the golden calf, you know, the uh, cows, which were, by, by the way, deities in Egypt, the children of Israel 
came out of Egypt believing in cows. It was part of the deities of Egypt until God finally said, you know, your gods will have no more, Im mm -hmm. they will not be graven images, they will not be cows, because God is some kind of an invisible God. By the way, in my new book, I quote Josephus. I also quote Roman and Greek uh, authors from Menachem Stern's book, who talked 2,000 years ago about the exodus from Egypt. They talk about the shepherds, the Israelites. They talk about the people who had leprosy. They talk about the slaves. They talk about so many things. This book gives so many different dimensions to the Israelite presence in Egypt and in Arabia. Yeah, you told me that uh, you had to exercise quite a bit of scholarship in this particular book. Yes. Uh, I had to read many books to confirm everything that I believed. And so you're going to find the product of a lot of research in, in here. But the idea, and I want to get into the Kaaba in, in, in a moment, and, and the phylacteries. If you turn to the inside cover of this book, you'll see a picture of Avi wearing a prayer shawl and phylacteries. Those are those little cubic boxes on the forehead and the arm, and, and, uh, and they contain scripture. Yes. And you, you make a point about the cubic shape of the phylactery. Why is it a cube? Well, if you ask the rabbis, they don't know why. They just say it has to be perfectly uh, cubic. And inside of those uh, 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 phylacteries, you will find two parchments from uh, Exodus 13, which predates the Ten Commandments, predates Mount Sinai. We are still slaves in the land of Egypt. And then, of course, two more uh, parchments, which are from Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 11. By the way, if I were a Christian uh, phylactery maker, I have a fifth pouch for Matthew 23, verse 5, <laughs> which talks about the phylacteries too. And so they're well documented as having been around in Christ's time. Yeah, and they found them, by the way, in Masada. Uh, uh, oh, Yigal really? Yadin, when he excavated Masada, he found phylacteries that remained there 2,000 years, so preserved by the desert. You're saying that the phylactery goes all the way back to the wilderness march. Before. It goes back to when we're still slaves in the land of Egypt. In other words, you have the ten plagues, then you have the Passover, and then we are about to cross the Red Sea. We're still in Egypt. Uh, we're still in our homes in Egypt. I mean, we're fleeing, but we're still uh, in Egypt, and that's Exodus 13. So this predates all of that. How about that? The book is called Return to Mecca. <clears throat> a lot of scholarship, a brand new idea, and a lot of factual material concerning the status of things in America and in the world today because the Islamic authorities, uh, let's just lump them all together and call them the Islamic Brotherhood, have designs on overtaking the entire world, right? Uh, absolutely. The destruction of the Jew on Saturday, Christian on Sunday, Hindu, Buddhist, and blacks any day, and then the Muslims slaughter each other. In other words, the plan of Allah, Satan, is the killing of every human being on the face of the earth in the name of Allah. And Avi's book? It's called Return to Mecca, will help you to understand a lot more about what's going on. 1995 plus shipping and handling call, the number that you see on your screen right now. Of course, that's our 800 number, 1-800-475-1111. Avi, we uh, wish you bless the blessings of the Lord on your travels, and uh, you. I, I pray for the success of your book. Amen. And I believe the success of my book will be the success of the Judeo-Christian West defeating Satan and sending him to the pits of hell for a thousand years. And as far as your uh, efforts to gain a Bible block party... In we are very close, very close. We will be, God willing, in the next elections. In the next election in Israel, and by the way, a Bible block party would be a Judeo-Christian Very correct. Based on the values of the, of the Bible for the Jews and the Christians. Well, thanks very much for coming here, and we always enjoy it. Avi Lipkin, and uh, he's on his way, and uh, who knows what he'll be doing next. Whatever it is, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know, because we like to kind of keep in touch with him. He's a great source of news from Israel. For us right here at Prophecy in the News, Gary Stearman. Have a great day in the Lord, and keep looking up. <laughs>